my family that um, we had a country preacher. My grandfather was a country preacher. And so my brother is here with us today worshiping, and he is Reverend John Wilson. So I guess there must be something in the genetics a little bit <laughs> that carried through. <laughs> It, 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 it came down. It skipped a generation, but it came on down. <laughs> All righty. So our introduction. Rejoice always begins the reading from 1 Thessalonians. Isaiah and the psalmist make clear that God is turning our mourning into laughter and shouts of joy. All God's children got a robe. Go to the words of a spiritual. It is not so much a stately, formal, pressed outfit as it is a set of party clothes, clothes we are happy to wear. We receive that robe in baptism and in worship we gather for a foretaste of God's party. The call to worship. Love has come down to us this Advent season, divine love which heals and transforms our lives. With great joy, we receive that love and share it with others. We open our hearts to all God's children, the last, the least, and the lost, as well as those who feel privileged. The Lord has done and continues to do great things for us. Praise be to God, who loves us so much and who challenges us to be people of joy in this darkened world. Amen and our order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who opens the heavens and draws near to us with salvation. Amen. Amen. God is patient and merciful, desiring all to come to repentance, trusting this promise of grace. Let us confess our sin. Everlasting God, you love justice and you hate wrongdoing. We confess the fear, greed, and self-centeredness that make us reluctant to work against oppression. We are complicit in systems of exploitation. We choose comfort over courage. We are careless with creation's bounty. Look upon us with mercy. Turn our hearts again to you. Make us glad to do your will and to walk in your ways for the sake of our waiting world. God's forgiving love has been poured upon earth and one of us, and each one of us. Hear the good news, you are healed and forgiven. Amen. Our gathering in him is how great is our God. of a king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice let all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will sing how great, how great is our God. to age he stands and time is in his hand beginning and the end beginning and the end the god had three in one father spirit son the lion and the lamb the lion and the lamb how great how great is our god sing with me sing with me how great is our god and all see how great how great is our god name above all names name 
is our God. How great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, and for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our prayer of the day. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God. Open our ears to the words of your prophets that anointed by your spirit, we may testify to your light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Okay. Our announcements are as follows, and welcome all who brave the uh, oncoming rain to be here today. So again, we are having coffee, not coffee hour, but breakfast right after church. And if you have a child who would like to be part of the Christmas presentation, speak with Joy or Jackie after service in the rear of the church. And as in the past few bulletins, we are looking for another council member. And you can reach out to any of the council members, the existing council members. And the Hannah Prayer Ministry, as every week, still invites everyone to join in their Wednesday fasting until noon. We're lifting up our families, our church, the world for healing and peace. The financial committee reports that we received tithes and offerings of 3700 and $87 for the week ending 1210. Amen to that. We are having a council meeting Thursday, this coming Thursday, the 21st at 6.30. There is a Zoom link if you're interested in joining. And that is all for the announcements. Does anyone else have announcements in the sanctuary or Zoom? remind everyone that next Saturday at 10 o'clock we will be decorating the church for Christmas so please come out and join us you know it's a fun time we really do where's Mark Mark I don't know if you're gonna have music with for us <laughs> next week or not but Mark always likes to have music when we're working he wants to make it as easy and as pleasant <laughs> as possible and once again for those who might not have heard earlier Sunday school is back I know that Rona just mentioned it, but I just want to emphasize that Sunday school is back. If there are people in your, or young families in your community and you want to invite them to come not only to worship, but to Sunday school as well, this is a beginning. And I know that it's going to get even bigger than it has been in the past, amen? Amen. So our worship will continue with, what's coming, the lighting of the Advent candle, I believe.
in a world of war, violence, and abuse, where families live in shelters and children grow up in fear, God, we call upon you. Prince of Peace, come. In this season of Advent, we wait for the coming of peace in your world. We await the birth of Emmanuel, God with us, who comes into our lives in a new way. Come, Messiah. Come and save us. He came now that we may have hope. He came down that we may have hope. He came down that we may have hope. Hallelujah forevermore. Peace. He came down that we may have hope. This is a congregational hymn. So we all should be <laughs> singing this, <laughs> please. You don't, you know, you don't have to. If you don't want to stand up, that's fine. But we all need to be singing this. Okay, Amen. I'm sorry, Dr. Brown. Oh, that was good. That was good. That okay, was good. okay. Praise God. Okay, here we go. <laughs> he came down that hope we may have hope. He came down that we may have hope. He came. Blessing of the lector. Let us pray. Bless Rob and our lector and open our hearts to the nourishment of your word. Help us hear your word, wait for your promised coming, and prepare your way with faithfulness and steadfast love. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church family. Good morning. The first lesson is a reading from Isaiah in the 61st chapter, 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. Though the people had returned to Jerusalem from exile in Babylon, they continued to face hardship and oppression. In the language of the Jubilee year described in Leviticus 25, the prophet moved by the Spirit of God announces deliverance for those who are oppressed and comfort for those who mourn. The reading. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to oppress to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit, they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall bind, they should build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former de devastation. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastation of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their, compens their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall know among the nations, shall be known among the nations,
and their offsprings among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exude in my God, for he has clothed me with his garment of salvation. He has covered me with his robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with the garland, and the bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, they were then were we like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue was with shouts of joy. And they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are glad indeed to restore our fortunes, O oh Lord, like the water courses of night. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheep. By encouraging them to live lives of continual joy, prayer, and thanksgiving. The closing blessing is grounded in the hope of Christ's coming. The reading. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the word of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls, calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. Shall we stand? Halle, 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 hallelujah, halle, 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 hallelujah, halle, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> The Holy Gospel according to John. John's Gospel describes Jesus as the light of the world. John the Baptist is presented as a witness to Jesus, one who directs attention away from himself to Christ, the true light. The Gospel. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I'm not. Are you the prophet? 
He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, now they have been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are not neither the Messiah nor Elijah? nor the prophet. John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you, did, you do not know. The one who is coming after me, I am not worthy to untie a thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord. church family grace peace and love to you from our God who is not hidden amen, amen. is anybody feeling blessed this week yes. oh great fabulous <laughs> we are say who was it somebody over here said something say it what you have to say good morning I have a big mouth. Okay. Dad. <laughs> no, no, no. But you have to use this mic. Oh. Good morning. 
family. Good morning. This is Sister Dorette, the biggest mouth anyone ever find. But anyway, you have not, because you ask not, have been asking around both outside and in church for a big print Bible because I have a problem with my eyes. And this morning, I was blessed with a Bible. I hope it's a big print Bible. I haven't opened it yet, but I know it's a big print Bible. So I thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know that that was not planned. It was completely impromptu, but the Holy Spirit knew or knows what she's doing. Amen. And we're going to get into that today. So I thank you so much for starting us off like that. But did you notice that our gospel for today is not from St. Mark, but from St. John? John is mentioned in the gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, though portrayed in different ways. John is identified as evangelist, baptizer, and encourager. And in our reading, John is not mentioned as the baptizer, but John the evangelist. John is simply a man sent from God to testify to the light. To those who came seeking answers to their questions, he is referred to as John, and his presence is to bear witness to the light. Jesus, who is in their midst, but they do not know it. Verses 1 to 4 reminds us Jesus was always present and knows everything. However, there are verses left out, and I believe they provide important information. Our gospel reading shares important information about John. John is a witness to the light, and he witnesses, which is a verb, to what he knows to be true. And that's pointing to Jesus. John's witness, leads, John's witness lends credibility to Jesus' movement that is going to start. And in John's gospel, witness is the beginning of faith. Bearing witness to the word, Jesus Christ is the foundation of the emergence of our faith in God. John's knowledge of Jesus does not come from journeying with Jesus, as will his disciples. Rather, God has revealed to John, here is the Lamb of God. The term witness or some form of it appears over 50 times in the Gospels, not the Bible, in the four Gospels. This is a clear emphasis on the importance of witnessing in the life of the church. In our reading, the delegation who comes to John have specific questions, and John emphatically tells them the truth. He is not the light. He is not the prophet Elijah. He states, I am not the one that you seek. Just as last week's reading told, he claims to be the voice that is crying out from Isaiah. And in this gospel, John serves no other function than a voice that is crying out. He is the herald of the coming good news. And if we look at the last verses, we see that John does not miss a beat. He keeps on baptizing those who are coming to him. They continue to question John, why do you baptize? He does not answer the question, but again, John focuses on the mission. It is no wonder the miracle is hard to see, even at the the authorities will never see John and Jesus as anything other than troublemakers. So the question this text asks today is, are we any different? Can we too see the magic that God sends in the form of people and places and circumstances that show forth God's everlasting covenant with us? We all want the magic of Christmas. What we do not understand is that the magic of this proclamation is all around us. We are like the people in Nazareth. Oftentimes we don't see the good that is around us. Help or assistance that comes from unexpected places, bringing us help when we need it. A remembrance of God's presence among us. We are like the people in Nazareth. We can't believe that ordinary people we, can, we know can be anointed with the spirit of the Lord to accomplish amazing things. Did somebody say amen? Did I, did I? No. Can we stop even in difficult times and see God's presence in the now and pray for God's coming in our future? 
These texts challenge us to do just that, to see what others do not see and to believe in the magic of God in our everyday and often painful lives. Through Jesus, God comes to bind up the brokenhearted, to bring freedom to the captives, and to declare the good news to all the world using God's children, sinners that we are. We are called to be witnesses to the love of God that is shown to us. We are called to love our neighbor as ourselves, even when our neighbor does not love us back. We are called to witness to the world with dignity and truth and to do it in a way that shows the love of God. Witnesses say what they have seen or heard or attest to, to the truth of another's testimony. But John answers, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness what the prophet Isaiah said makes straight the way of the Lord. We are all called to the role of John, pointing to the one who is mightier. We are not the light. We can't save the world or answer the world's deepest questions or solve its problems. We are not the Messiah, but we are not simply silenced either. The early church embraced John as he was, that voice that was bearing witness to Christ. And Martin Luther talked about being as Christ to our neighbor. It would also be appropriate to claim that we are as John, the witness to the world around us. John straddles the past and the future that is coming. And we find ourselves in a similar place during Advent. The Lord has come and yet is still coming. The coming one is in our midst and yet still hidden. John declares to the leaders that the coming one stands among them unknown. Christ also stands among us even when we do not recognize it. The good news is that Jesus still comes in ways that don't fit our expectations and surprises us with life. The Advent season is a time of preparing for ourselves and others to do what God will have us to do. St. Francis said, preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. And what is the gospel? What is the good news? We wait with bated breath the coming of the one who was born to die so that you and I might have eternal life. The church's Eucharist, the church's Eucharist is a foretaste of that coming of Christ, which is still ahead. In word and sacrament, song and story, we encounter the reign of God in our midst and we reveal that future joy to the world. God sent Jesus Christ to be a blessing to the nations as the new covenant for all people. Because of this, we can read Isaiah's word as a personal blessing and call to responsibility. God has anointed us to proclaim the good news, to heal and to comfort. God's promises are here in Jesus right now. And through Christ, God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. And that's from Isaiah 61:11. As followers of Jesus, we can be like John, reflecting the light and love of Jesus to those around us. To do this, we need to remain connected to Jesus and mindful of our role as his representatives in the world. We witness to and proclaim the love of God who chose, who chose to take on human flesh, walk among us and to die for our sins. And you know, we witness to and proclaim that our God is with us through all circumstances. If it were not so, we would not be here in this place at this time. We witness to and proclaim the love of God that existed before creation. We witness to and proclaim the love of God in our history. We witness to and proclaim the love of God that is with us today. We witness to and proclaim the love of God that is guaranteed in the future. We witness to and proclaim the love of God through Jesus the Christ, our Lord, our Redeemer, the light of the world. And on this, the third Sunday of Advent, the question to put to ourselves is the one put to John. Who are you? We are witnesses. But that is, in fact, who we really are. Folks that were sent from God as witnesses to testify to this light. 
so that all might believe through him. And maybe, just maybe, as we testify, we bear witness to and proclaim the glory of the light, we will embody the light and become those who reveal the light of Christ anew in the world, a world that increasingly is desperate to see and to know the light. As it says in John, in the light is life, and the life was the light of all people. All people look to us to see the light. When all that we say and all that we do bears witness to the light, heaven and salvation will be understood, not as a time and place after death, but rather the world as it should be here and now. In our time today, we will hear the testimony from two more, because we already had heard a testimony this morning. We're going to hear from two more members of our church family. And when I asked them if they would testify, they immediately said yes. They are ready and willing to testify and share the importance of God in their lives. Good morning, church family. Good morning. I wrote it down. Okay. Earlier, Pastor Linda asked questions concerning what God has done with me, how I have known God, what God does with us, how we have known God, and what God is up to now. And as usual, it seems like Pastor Linda doesn't always want to answer. She wants you to think about it. And in thinking, I started growing and growing beyond uh, where I thought I would. I thought I would just come up with a few answers. But in my response to those, I have sung the song, Have Thine Own Way, but had no idea of the reconstruction that was to get underway. According to God's plan, my attention was drawn to seeking his kingdom first. This began to teach me all about how little value all the things that this world system trains us to seek after and strive for. He began to teach me the value of every word from his mouth, starting with Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God, and John 1-1, in the beginning was the word. I had long since known John 3-16. John 3-16, for God so loved the world that we all know that Whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life lasts beyond time that we can see. All my life, it showed up everywhere. However, God recently showed me John 3.15 and the different life I am to be living now. That is eternal life, which is outside of any time. I believe what God's word said, that Jesus Christ came so that I would be freed from what has, what has held everyone in bondage that was born after Adam, that is sin itself. By believing, I have been transformed. I have a renewed mind. I strive to not be conformed to this world. Jesus has been trying to get us to let him shine his light inward and through us so that others who don't have it, still in darkness, searching but not finding, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, deceived, those others can see Christ in us, the hope of glory, and from that, they can glorify God. Amen. Thank you very much.
How can you turn your eyes to God and sing his praises when life is hard? And where do you find the words when your life is full of sorrow and struggle? And how do you display your faith in the midst of suffering? John 14 says, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus spoke with complete confidence about heaven. He spoke of his father's house. Jesus didn't wonder about life beyond earth. He knew it and told his disciples that there was room for all in heaven. Love prepares a welcome. With love, expecting parents prepare room for a baby. With love, the hostess prepares for her guests. Jesus prepared a place for his people because he loves them and is confident of their arrival. As most of you know, Mark and I lost our son, Sean, seven years ago. In fact, his birthday was this past Thursday. He would have been 40. He would have. He, would have been 40. Although Sean is not with us physically, we feel his presence every second, every minute of every day. And I have peace knowing that God prepared a room for him. We were blessed to have him for 33 plus years and now a grandson and two children who give us ultimate joy, you know, except when they're not, but for the most part. <laughs> In Romans 5, Paul wrote, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. I would like to think that God sprinkles a little perseverance, character, and hope on me as I sleep, so I can wake up and be a better person but whatever his plan is, I trust it. Everything I do now, I try to do with a purpose for the glory of God. I didn't come back to church for a few years because my heart was just broken into a million pieces. And at that time, I could not really see that this sanctuary is exactly where I should be in Christian fellowship and doing whatever God leads me to do. I don't think that Jesus promised that we'd have a life without trouble, but that we can have an untroubled heart even in a troubled life. And I can say today, it is well with my soul. I didn't have to preach today. I just should have let them go up here and do it. I didn't need to. Well, we're going to have to change that a little bit. <laughs> so what do we have next? I don't have my book. What do we have next? What, what a mighty God we serve. Congregational hymn. What a mighty God we serve. Mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. One more time. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. You can tell that my brother is a Baptist preacher. <laughs> we haven't had so many amens in this church and I don't know how long. <laughs> and it's good to hear. So thank you for showing us and letting us hear that we, how we need to also give praise to God. Amen. 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 
So let us confess what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy and universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We will continue our service this morning with prayers of intercession. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Congregation, receive our prayer. Fill our mouths with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy as we bear witness to the great things you have done. Give your church a spirit of gladness as we gather and as we are sent. Merciful God, let the trees of the field sing your praise. Protect forests, orchards, rainforests, and all wooded areas from disease and defrostation. Keep us grateful for their gifts of oxygen, food, shade, and shelter. Merciful God, you, you love justice and promise your favor to those who are oppressed, brokenhearted, and incarcerated. Grant wisdom and compassion to those who work for public safety and all who work within prison, jails, and courts, that mercy may increase and violence wither away. Merciful God, give us strength to pray for a world without ceasing and provoke us toward love and good deeds for all who are in need, especially our brothers and sisters in Israel, uh, Palestine, the Gaza Strip, as they suffer the loss of family, loss of food, medical equipment. Father God, we pray that you will send workers in the vineyard to provide for them. Provide for all without adequate housing, food, employment, or access to health care. Empower us as helpers and advocates. Merciful God, open our hearts to those who serve as truth tellers in our church and in our society. Bless leaders in church and society in their task for proclamation. Amplify voices of peacemakers, advocates, and especially those whose voices are ignored or marginalized. Merciful God, with gratitude we rejoice in the saints who witness to your life in all circumstances in whom your spirit was not quenched, even in death. Through them, teach us always to hold fast to what is good. Merciful God, 
Listen to those and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. And this morning, um, we pray on our prayer list. I would be amiss if I didn't pray for our brothers and sisters. Prayers are asked for Nia, Kevin, Beverly, Jalen, Francis, Joy, Brian, James, Lynette, Noel, oh, sorry, Lynette, George, Donald, Brandon, Frederica, Janice, Chetina, Amina, Bridget, Jerome, Nancy and James, Eleanor, Dwayne, Virginia, Queen, Heather, Wharton, Heather, sorry, Hazel, Joseph, Sherry, Irvin, Julia, Lee, Pastor Brenda, Medlin, Lorette, Zenitha, Nora, Cecil, Wade, Emmy, Diane, Helen, Fernandez, Helen, and Fernandez. Merciful Father, Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace.
This is an invitation to offering. Let us be generous in our giving that others may see in us the transforming power of God. Let us be lavish in our gifts that others may draw life from the bounty of God's blessings. Let us pray together. God, our provider, by your merciful hand, abundance springs up from the earth. Receive and bless these gifts of your own bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. In the Lutheran tra tradition, everybody is invited to God's table. So if you're visiting with us today, please know that you are welcome. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thank you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, living God. Time after time, you draw us here to inspire us, feed us, and save us. Especially when our love fails, you are here, steadfast and true. You created this world and called it good. You created us to proclaim your good to all. And so we raise our voices in praise. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and delight, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets, hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on all gathered under the sound of my voice and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With all your beloved gathered under the sound of my voice and your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O oh God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take See 
that he gave his holy begotten son that who so Should not perish, should not perish, but they, they shall have, they shall have everlasting life. God could have chosen to never love again fallen man could go his way and die in his sin but God in his Compassion said, I'll pay redemption's price. So he took on the form of man and became the perfect sacrifice. If riches could have the dead, then God could have sold all the walls of jasper and the streets that are paved in gold, but he knew the price of one lost soul was more than wealth could buy. And if redemption were ever bought, only love would satisfy. For, for God so loved He gave his only begotten son that that who so believeth on him should not perish should not perish but they shall have they shall have everlasting Everlasting life they shall have ever everlasting life ever lasting life ever lasting life.
I know it was the blood I know it was the blood for me One day when I was lost Jesus died upon the cross and I know it it was the blood for me he never said a mumbling word 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 for me one day when I was lost Jesus died upon the cross and I know it was the blood for me the blood came streaming down all oh, the blood came streaming down his blood came streaming down his blood came streaming down for me one day when I was lost Jesus died up, up on the cross and I know it was the blood the blood for me I know it was I know it it was nothing but the blood oh I know it was the blood for me He died, yes he did, and I know it was a blood for me, I know. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. 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 Generous God, in bread and cup you have revealed your glory for all people to see together. Nourished by this meal, send us out to proclaim your good news of liberation and release. Brought to birth in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Before I do the charge to the people, I would like to remind everyone that the Deborah Circle will be hosting breakfast downstairs. Everyone is welcome. So please go down, support our community that is here right now. And we keep seeing sign after sign after sign that God is in our midst. Is that right, Deacon? Yes. yes. All right. All right. Resounding yes. Amen. People of God. Go out into the world in peace, have courage, hold on to what is good, return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering. Honor all people and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The God of peace bless you. The love of Christ sustain you in hope, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Keep awake. Thanks be to God.